Okay, let's jump start it while everybody's taking places. So, welcome. Uh, my name is Dmitry. Uh, I have been working on the kernel development since 2007. That's quite a while. And for the last four years, I have been working at Linaro on improving uh, Qualcomm platforms in upstream and making sure that they work better than they can, uh, that they did before. And one of the topics that got us a lot of questions both internally and from our customers and from other people on the, from the community was the USB-C thingy because you can guess it differs a lot from uh, what previous USB buses did and uh, it is slightly overcomplicated, slightly undercomplicated. It is pretty well documented but uh, usually you don't read all the documentation, all the specs. And for this conference, we decided that it is a good idea to provide some demystification of the USB-C, of, of different terms that I applied to this bus and to how it is handled in the Linux kernel and in the user space. So yeah, bits of history in the beginning was the bus and the bus was USB 1.1. Okay, that's not quite true, there were many buses, uh, and the USB 1.1 of course was not the first one. So before that there was USB 1.0, but nobody ever touched that. So the first USB bus was USB 1.1. It was very simple, it had just four pins. Well, I'm sp spending some time on the history because that might be important at a later time. And USB 1 and USB 2 in the beginning really had just four pins. Uh, VBUS, voltage, uh, ground of course, and one single differential pair of uh, wires, one single lane DP, D plus, D minus. USB 3.1 arrived slightly later, and uh, at that point it was decided that 48 megabits per second is not enough. So we got two more differential pairs, one to transmit and one to receive. One more ground pin, but that's just a detail, and we got uh, several gigs per, uh, gigabits per second. That's good. So that was already nine pins. And meanwhile, uh, at the same time, there was different branches of the same standard. So USB 2 OTG uh, added an identification pin that allowed you to, to understand if, if it is how the device gets connected if it, if it is supposed to be USB host or USB device, if it is supposed to uh, work in this or that mode, if it is supposed to draw power or to provide power. And of course, just one pin was not enough. So it also got two protocols, which uh, rare uh, were implemented correctly. So that was a session request pro protocol uh, that was used to change the, uh, to exchange power capabilities and host negotiation protocol to swap data rules. And so that was a, that was a, there was a pin and there were two protocols. And of course USB 3.0 could not, could not stand behind and they replaced host negotiation protocol with yet another protocol rule swap because using the old protocol could not work anymore. They implemented uh, the same idea, swapping uh, data rules, so swapping, uh, swapping if you connect two devices you could d define at the runtime which is the host, which is the gadget, which provides data and which uses the data. But it used the USB 3 messages for, the me for this exchange. And of course, there is also a question of power. So first USB devices were pretty limited. Five volts, not more than uh, half an amp. That's way too low by the, uh, that became pretty low, uh, pretty low pretty soon. So USB 3 got updated to uh, 5 volts, uh, 7, uh, 750 milliamps, still not so great. And this, is, this, was, this was not so good for battery charging. So, battery charging. Uh, we don't have too many pins, but uh, let's add some, uh, uh, some uh, resistances uh, to the D plus, D minus. Uh, and let's allow this to be 5 volts, 1.5 amp. Well, somebody allowed two amps, but still not so not so great. And again, this was just some resistance attached to the to the same bus to the same pins. USB power delivery uh, appeared slightly later. Uh, it it used uh, encoded messages over voltage pin now, and it allowed more interesting. So, what can be already used for the for the laptops or for interesting devices? 12 volts, five amps. 
and in the end it allowed it up to 20, uh, 240 uh, watts with the RSM standards. And of course, some of the companies, and Qualcomm is one of them to name, uh, decided that that's not enough and that's not good for them. So they created proprietary protocols. Some of you know Quick Charge, and Quick Charge went through several revisions. Uh, it was super secret in the beginning. It got reverse engineered uh, meanwhile, and I hope that everybody now can use power delivery. But again, that, that was all going through the same pins, through the same bus, and uh, Quick Charge used also resistances attached to the plus D minus that adds that adds additional efforts to get that working correctly, that adds additional efforts to make that show that nobody blows up, that there are the, there is no uh, smoke coming off your device if because uh, if you expect five volts and you get twenty that can be damaging. And yeah, what about the connectors? Uh, I don't know about you, but when I was working on the uh, USB uh, when I was working on the devices, I had a huge pile of the, of the cables and uh, different connectors hanging on the wall because, okay, there were type, type 8 and type B, which is normal plug. Then uh, there were super speed uh, kinds of those, so one could, you could fit uh, uh, full speed into super speed, but not other way around. And of course, that was too big for the mobile devices, and come on, we are living in the world of the mobile devices, so first it was mini, and there were uh, one mini was not enough, so there were mini A and mini B, of course, for the host and for the device. And then uh, OTG was starting to come into play. So my first PDA already had mini AB, so that you can plug either device or a host into it and uh, hope that it will work. But mini was still too big, so it was micro, and then micro super speed. And of course, everybody had plugs and sockets and uh, cables, a lot of cables. And uh, that was kind of a trauma to find the cable, or kind of, a, kind of an issue to find the cable that works in your particular case, unless you was not particularly sure, or unless you were just attaching your uh, phone to your personal computer or to your laptop. So at some point, USB, uh, USB group decided that we, we need one connector and one thing to rule all of that, USB-C to rule them all. Yeah, so that's kind of an upgrade from nine pins, as I said. Uh, good things, it is a symmetrical connector, you can plug it other way. If you, have, if you did not spend a minute trying to plug USB-A this way, that way, this way, oh no, that was that way, you, you would not understand USB-C, but if you did, that's, that's a time saver. Also, uh, single plug type, single uh, connector type, uh, single socket. So you don't have to have a pile. You, just, you are supposed to have just, just the cables hanging on your wall, and they should be the same. Well, we'll come to that slightly later. What remained? You will see in the middle there is still D plus, D minus. Uh, you will see that there are two pairs of that. That's just a miracle. Oh, that's your imagination. Uh, it, in, in, uh, um, internally, it's just a one set of wires, and because you can plug connector either way, uh, they will be just connected in a proper way. So uh, there, there is just one pair of D plus, D minus. Don't look at that. And also, you rem if you remember, uh, super speed had two additional super speed lanes. USB-C got four of that. So two to transmit, two receive. It, uh, do you remember that I said that power delivery used uh, messaging over VBUS? Oh, you don't, probably do not want to mix voltage and messaging, or uh, unless you are doing power over Ethernet, or even uh, networking over power plug. So these got se separate configuration channel pins, CC1, CC2, uh, and this was not enough, so let's get two more uh, pins to send additional messages, that is sideband use. SBU pale. So that sounds good up to now, yep, but uh, you don't want just a cable, you want a cheap cable. So then comes just USB 2.0 cable, which does not have anything fancy, nothing else than just D plus, D minus. Yeah, you want to plug uh, your super speed flash drive and you see that it's uh, just full speed. It does not work. Uh, you, there are USB 3 cables, which do not provide uh, SBU lines or uh, some other lines. So 
if you want to connect uh, to your monitor and you use this, this kind of USB 3 cable, oh yeah, uh, your flash drive will work, but your monitor will not work. So my recommendation is if, you, if you're thinking about a cable, just look for the Thunderbolt cable. It will cost you a fortune, but then, oh, Thunderbolt is another, uh, is another user for the same thingy, and uh, it works. Yeah, there should be probably some trademark next to it. Uh, some details, yeah. So as I said, for the USB 1 and USB 2 compatibility, D plus, D minus, symmetrical thing, the bus, yeah, the same thing. Uh, ground, yeah, you of course need ground. So that's the simplest cable. Uh, that's, that's the simplest plug or socket. So everything, well, I'm talking about cables, but this all gets to the same thing. USB 3, yeah, we are still backwards compatible to USB 3. So at least two lanes or USB 3.2 got two pairs of two lanes to bump your speed, but still nothing required, nothing fancy, no additional configuration, etc. And now comes the beautiful part of USB-C. So you do not want just to connect your flash drive, you want to connect your monitor, or you want to connect your uh, precious uh, USB-C dock, or Thunderbolt dock, or HDMI, or anything else that has a lot of other stuff connected to it. So USB uh, uh, group decided to create alternative modes. You can say, yeah, this is USB-C, or USB uh, 3, what you were supposed, USB 3.2, what you're supposed to think, but let's, let's say that these pins should not go to the USB. Some of these pins can go to the tier monitor, or they can become a PCI, they can uh, become uh, an HDMI, uh, you, you can name it. You can create your own protocols, you can uh, define them and repurpose your pins for your precious use case. Uh, and the beautiful of it is that even if you use, even if you repurpose all the super speed lines, uh, you still can use D plus D minus. So even in, in, in the worst case where you have a four lane huge resolution display port monitor, you can still get the, uh, USB 2 to it and you can still get your mouse connected through your monitor. That sounds funny until you find it useful. And uh, some of the alt modes uh, decide, uh, allow you to say, yeah, from the four pins, let's say two will go to the alt mode and the other two will go to the USB 3. So the, uh, the, they coexist pretty well. And uh, unless it goes wrong, unless something goes wrong, it works pretty well. Accessory mode. So I said that, yeah, uh, you have USB all the time. But uh, what if I have just my laptop and uh, what if I have just the USB-C pins on it? Or, yeah, my phone also has just the USB-C and no, no audio jack, nothing else. So USB uh, group created the accessory modes. Uh, if we plug special cable in it, the whole USB thingy stops being USB. It becomes a JTAG. Uh, or if you plug another special cable, uh, I think Xiaomi was pretty known for that, the whole USB thing uh, becomes uh, an analog audio. Yeah, it is now deprecated, nobody uh, should use that anymore, but still, you can do that. Uh, what's the difference? Again, the alt mode, oh, that, that causes a lot of confusion because when uh, somebody sees alt mode, alternative mode, accessory mode, you know, the difference is that in the alternative mode, you have all the USB-C uh, uh, configuration channel, all the USB-C uh, uh, pins working as they expected. In the accessory mode, well, you, you see the names, but in the JTAG, they will be a completely different things. There will be no D plus, D minus, there will be no configuration channel. There will be TCK, TMS, TSM, and all that stuff, all the resets. In the analog audio, yes, there will be no D plus, D minus. It will be microphones. So yeah, using the same pins for analog audio. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm running too fast. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Type-C API. So now to the interesting part, to the Linux kernel. Uh, I said that there are different levels, different things. So first of all comes the just USB Type-C H. That's the uh, gener very generic API for the Type-C port. It defines a port, a plug, a cable, a partner, which means that if you plug two devices, you have your host, you have a partner, 
and you have two, up to two devices in the middle, two sides of the cable. Yeah, because I did not mention, the cable can also be powered. The cable can also have the internal electronic things to bust the signal, to communicate to the two sides, to improve the eagle eye when you're transmitting a high-speed data. So cable is also a thing now. Uh, multiplexer, yeah. So what happens if you want in your device to have the to have the work in accessory mode. Because in most of the cases, uh, for some strange reason, display port, uh, sorry, no, not, ac uh, not the accessory, the alt mode. Because for some strange reason, usually the display port does not come out of the same pins as the uh, USB 3 comes. So you need to multiplex them on your board. That's what uh, Type-C controllers do, and that's what is in Linux called multiplexer. Uh, Type-C switch, yeah. Uh, you can plug it either way, but the electronics still, know, still should know how it is plugged because there were two pins, CC1, CC2, and we used just one for the messaging. So yeah, that's a separate thing called Type-C switch. And last but not least is the Type-C retimer. The uh, display port and USB 3.0 uh, standards get so fast that even the traces on the board need improvement. Uh, the eagle eye di diagram can become not so good after, the, after all the uh, traces on your PCB. So let's create a retainer, which just bumps your signal up to required properties. And yes, those three are all different things and you should keep those in mind when programming your device or when uh, writing device tree or uh, writing the properties of your device. I will get to that slightly later. Yeah, so how do we handle everything in Linux? That was the low-level API. So, of course, you can uh, plug into that. So you can drive the, you can get the signals. You can measure the resistances on the uh, CC pins, on all the rest of the pins, uh, get all the events, handle everything manually. Yeah, but uh, unless you have a strange hardware, that's already implemented for you. That's called ty a Type C Manager or TCPM. Uh, it is a single implemented software stack uh, that. Uh, handles uh, power delivery messages, that handles alt mode, that handles accessory mode, that handles uh, sending and receiving of the data, and it just tells the rest of Linux, okay, we have got display port connected. And now we have got a hot plug event from the display port. So yeah, now we have a manager inside Linux. The standard implementation is called TCPM. It implements generic state machine as, as required by the USB, USB C standard. It has low-level callbacks just to exchange the state, to measure, to measure the CC pins when anything gets connected, uh, to uh, wait a little bit uh, or when you, uh, when you connect, so bounce delays. Uh, each requires you to be able to send USB PD messages, well, if your hardware supports that. Uh, if uh, it's, it's, well, it's a low-level and all software thing. Uh, now comes the implementation part. Uh, so as I said, we were working on the Qualcomm platforms. And yeah, older platforms uh, use the TCPM, so everything is implemented on the Linux side. Uh, some of the platforms support alt mode. Some, some of the platforms do not support DisplayPort. Some of the platforms do not even support power delivery messaging. So we, have, we just have to tell to the TCPM and uh, that, no, that's not supported. Not, nothing fancy, just USB 3, please. And it will handle that for you. So that's, that's for the TCPM. TCPCI, I'm sorry I'm bad with the abbreviate, uh, abbreviations. That's USB type C port controller interface specification. Again, by the USB C, uh, that's a standard register level. So previous was just a standard uh, state machine. This is a register level uh, programming. It also has a core driver, uh, platform glue drivers. Uh, several vendors use that uh, for their Type-C controllers. Uh, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, I don't know, uh, Qualcomm did not use that for their uh, controllers, so we, didn't, we did not have a chance to, uh, to look into that. Uh, it, it really defines just the register, uh, register specs to send, uh, to send messages, to receive messages. It can go over the i 2 c bus, over Direct Connect, or any else. Uh, well, it would not be 
USB, and it would not be uh, our precious vendors if everything was about the uh, just the devices. So whenever you see a device, uh, some of the vendors will say, oh, we have TPM, can we move that to the firmware TPM? We have the type C, can we move that to the firmware too? And so Intel created the USB uh, type C connector, whatever interface specification. Uh, it is a firmware thing, so that is uh, that became a very useful in, uh, interface for the ACPI systems. Most likely that's why Intel did that because you just extend, exchange messages with your firmware, with your embedded controller, and then you should not care about anything else. At least that was, that was in the beginning, because the first specification really told you, yeah, we'll handle everything for that. Uh, no, you cannot send a vendor message. You cannot send a uh, power delivery message to the other side. No, we will do that for you. Uh, why I'm saying that? Because if you want to negotiate some of the properties or some of the uh, options with the uh, with the other side, and if it is not something very standard, you need to send vendor messages. You need to send those messages to uh, communicate with the alt mode implementation on the other side. And first UCSI platform, or first UCSI implementation, first UCSI standards were bad about it, really bad. So they supported alt mode, but it was really, okay, this alt mode was negotiated. Uh, you got a signal for that. You got a message. Oh, the other side is this. No, you cannot, you cannot say anything to that. Uh, later implementation, uh, later standards got better. So Intel gave that away uh, and uh, it is now a, a, a shared standard defined by several groups, by several companies. So I'm sorry, Intel, it got better now. Uh, but uh, it, it, got, it, got, uh, it got more. Uh, messages. It got more details about how are we connected. It now allows us to send uh, VDM vendor messages to the other side. But unfortunately, still we have to think about old implementations because, uh, for example, uh, my Intel laptop does not have the uh, uh, newer standard implementation. The Qualcomm uh, laptop that I have here also does not have the uh, 2.x implementation. It's still UCSI one. So that, that matters, and that will be, that will be a, a, a one of the latest slides. Alt mode drivers. So that's another thing. Uh, uh, you, uh, as I said, we, uh, we, we uh, can negotiate and we can run the display port over the USB-C. But obviously we need to uh, tell the host and we need to tell the other side, the monitor, what we can do. And we should listen that, okay, the monitor has been connected, or the monitor has something to say to you, or oh, it, it got also wrong, so please disconnect the monitor. So this is all handled by the display port drivers, uh, but they are by alt mode drivers. In case of the, uh, another beautiful example of the non-standard thing, uh, Lenovo has a, have their own implementation of the dock interface, which is defined as the alt mode. And there are also messages to notify you when the power button was pressed, or there is a message to, uh, to, lead, uh, to light the LED on the dock. And this is also handled by the alt mode drivers. Uh, so that's why I told about VDM. Uh, this is called vendor messages. This is the same. They, they exchanged all of the same power delivery uh, mechanisms, uh, over the USB power delivery messages. And if you want to do anything sensible with your other partner, you have to talk to them. So this works pretty well with the TCPM. This works, this works pretty well with the TCPCI, where you can really just send a message or receive the message from the other side. With the UCSI, uh, that does not work that well. You do not have those messages. So of authors of the UCSI driver in Linux created uh, a host alt mode driver. Uh, the thing that emulates all those vendor-defined messages uh, that emulates talking to the other side. Yeah, if the UCSI is good enough to be able to communicate, yes, we will use it. If no, we will just say we will just state what we have, and we will make everything look like we are uh, getting or sending the uh, vendor-defined messages for the display port. But best, best effort, and uh, unlike other things, there is just a display port. Uh, signal handling. 
So the, uh, how do you route, how do you handle the USB-C on your device? How do you, ha how do you define everything on your, uh, on your board uh, when you're bringing it up, when you're bringing up the laptop, the dev kit or anything else? First of all, you have to understand what is implemented or how it is implemented. What kind of interface do you have? Is it a UCSI? It's good. Is it TCP CI? Well, it's not that good, but still good. Do, is it just a TCP M where you have to, to send uh, messages on your own when you have to handle everything on your own? Or is it a really a rare case, but there are several of them, uh, thank you, dear vendors, where you have to implement everything on your own, just looking at the type C port and getting everything done inside your driver? Uh, so that's the, that's, that's the core part. And then comes uh, actual signal routing, actual signal thing. So I'm thinking from the, dis uh, from the device tree point of view, uh, I'm sorry, ACPI people, you have already probably implemented everything in you in the AML. You have your CSI interface, you are good. Uh, spare us the device tree people because we have roles, USB role switch, we just, uh, which is just a, a mark in the device tree to tell that uh, the uh, other side has decided it, sh it should now be a host or it should now be a device or it's a gadget or it's just disconnected. So that's the role switch. Orientation switch, CC1, CC2, how to MOOC that. Retimer, yeah, it's just a pass through, but you still need to program them, especially in, the, uh, in case of the, if your board supports both display port and USB uh, signals, you might have to program that differently. So we have several retimers in, in the kernel now. Please take a look if you need. And usually it's just a copy paste. And the alt mode, yeah, we, you have to literally say what kind of alt mode is uh, supported by your board. Uh, usually it is just alt modes and then display port underneath it. In the device tree specification, we have defined just, just a display port. But if you need, if you need anything else, we would really like to hear about your case and define more in the, in the uh, device tree schema. And the mode switch, that is the multiplexer, which tells you that the signals are going to the display port controller or to the USB controller or to the PCI controller, to the HDMI, to something strange. Well, that's it. And of course, debug and audio. And, well, I have not seen a board that implements debug accessory mode I have seen devices which implement audio accessory mode. So this is also called mode switch. And if you have a, a debug, accessory mode, debug accessory mode on your board, please tell us. I would really like to see and to hack that device. I want to have JTAG over USB-C. Yeah, Qualcomm bits. So this is just a pointer where to look if you are in vain, if you are thinking how to do things. Uh, the very simple uh, thing, uh, Qualcomm PIMIC Type-C, yeah, uh, on the Qualcomm devices, uh, all the Type-C handling is implemented in the, in the power uh, management chip, so external to the, uh, to the generic SOC. Uh, this is a TCPM implementation done uh, by Brian O'Donoghue and improved by your truly. Uh, it supports uh, power delivery, it supports uh, sending and, uh, well, most of the signals, but also for some of the boards, uh, hardware engineers decided, oh, you don't need uh, power delivery. It's just a simple thing, so no. One and a half amps is enough. And as I said, TCPM uh, provides you with a way to live without power delivery messages. You will lose uh, alt modes, you will lose the display port, but that's the hardware decision. And so uh, uh, Qcom PIMIC Type-C also supports non-PD non mode. If you don't have any hardware, yeah, it can do that for you. So if you need this kind of, uh, to look how to implement non-PD mode and still to have USB-C, please take a look, this, it's there for you. Then uh, newer Qualcomm boards or newer Qualcomm laptops. Fortunately, we got just a UCSI, that's great. It's UCSI 1.0, 1.0 and 1.2 in, in the latest, but still UCSI, that's great. We don't have to care, we just have to send messages to the firmware, get a response. That's good, that's great. And some of the older laptops, uh, which did not yet have the uh, standard Qualcomm UCSI, 
uh, they had their own uh, embedded controllers. And each, for each of those embedded controllers, we have to implement the special use case setter because uh, unlike, the, uh, unlike the CPI world where you can say, yeah, it's handled by the ML, we cannot do that. So we still have to re-implement the ML in the C code. That's a gory, a gory thing. So currently we have one. Uh, one of the developers, uh, uh, Nikita, promised to send another one. And I have two more devices on my table that will need more of these uh, drivers. Unfortunately, yeah, the core thing, the CSI state machine is generic. The glue driver, as, we, as you can call it, it is platform specific and you have to do that on your own. Okay, now comes the very interesting part and that's how I actually I got into, into USB-C. Display port. Mm. That's just an old mode, as I said. We just repurpose two, uh, uh, two lanes or four lanes for the display port signals. Uh, we talk of the OX messages, uh, so basically edit over the SBU pins, and that should be it. That sounds great. Uh, but then come, all, then come all the details. So the old implementation. You would expect anything, but the old, for the old implementation, it just works. Because you just send all the messages, you exchange everything, and uh, this is how Linux expects it. We had to tell Linux the only thing that uh, the, the hot plug events will come from a slightly different device. And after that, uh, it really just worked. It got uh, all, up, all, all up and running, well, as, it, as you could get it with the display port. But... USB-C was just working. UCSI G-Link, the new stuff, the generic stuff. Uh, this comes a tricky part, so Qualcomm decided, yeah, let's not use the existing alt mode interface in the UCSI. Uh, let's send other kind of messages. I don't know, I did not talk to the engineers from that side, why they did that. Most likely it just predates the uh, UCSI standard or about the alt modes, or they did not like it, or they did want to have something more data about it. So we have out of band messages for the display port, and we have a separate driver. So we, uh, I'm working on merging everything back to the UCSI G link to have a single uh, party that looks for the type C, a single party that cares about UCSI, uh, type uh, USB C orientation and multiplexing and uh, everything. Uh, but there are some, some troubles with that. Uh, that would be more of a LPC talk, but I can spare a few minutes about it. And the last for the legacy platforms, yeah, everything is legacy. So uh, out of band messages, patches are pending, nothing works yet. I mean, for the display port, uh, nothing works in the upstream kernel. And we are trying to improve the uh, UCSI driver to get that merged. Why is that, is, why that is so important? Why can't we have just a separate driver? So this is now the ABI part. Uh, okay, so the laptop has a USB-C port, it has display port somewhere else, and you want for, uh, for your uh, user space to really know how everything fits together, because there is Type-C port, USB, DRM and well, some, several of them, and you, you really know, should know how everything fits. In the ACPI world, yeah, uh, everything works great because uh, they have the physical uh, location uh, definition where you can say that this Type C port is on the left side of the laptop, this Type C port is rear right, and this is just in front of you looking at you. Uh, and then the, in the ACPI world, you can also say, Oh, it, it, it detects that this USB port uh, is connected to this Type-C port. And this DRM connector is also, by the way, connected to this Type-C port. Uh, so this looks on, great on the Intel machines, but unfortunately on the, on the device tray systems, uh, there is no such thing. And we are still working on getting that done in the standard way so that your user space can, if it runs on the Qualcomm-based uh, laptop, 
uh, it will just it will also detect yeah this USB goes to this uh, Type C port. It's on your on, on the left of your laptop. Uh, by the way, you also have this uh, connector on the same Type C port. Yeah, that was pretty it. So. Uh, uh, as I said, we are, we, are look, uh, we are looking at this ABI thing. We are looking how to make the uh, user space ABI to work for the embedded devices, or not so embedded anymore. And we are looking on the improving of the UCSI driver to make that work with the not so standard UCSI implementations. Uh, some of the patches got in into the, into the 6.11. Some of the patches are expected in 6.12. And more, more yet to come. So I think that leaves us with a few minutes of questions, and I hope I got some of the demystification into your head, and maybe that got some of more myths into your heads also. So, questions? Uh, by default, no. So it takes really a lot to get up to 20 volts. So first of all, uh, when you connect a Type-C cable, it detects the resist resistances on the uh, CC pins. And it, uh, it, uh, uh, if your cable is correct, it, it, uh, if your cable is not correct, it will not talk to your, okay, thank you. It will not talk to your uh, other side at all about power delivery and you will get five volts, one and a half amps. Then, if resistances are correct and it identifies power delivery enabled, uh, it will start sending messages. It will exchange all the capabilities of both sides. Uh, there, uh, I, I think there is a uh, error correction code or protection. So, if you send a message incorrect, I, do, I don't remember. I don't remember, but I think there should be. Uh, so, don't trust me on this topic. But, and only when all capabilities are negotiated. Only after that it will tell, okay, yeah, please give me 20. Or please give me 40. Yeah. And would you expect like modern phone to be tolerant on 20 volts if it's, uh, uh, if it has USB-C port or is it just? Uh... Uh, not all ports are 20 volts tolerant. So uh, for example, when I told that there are, uh, when I told that there are devices uh, that do not support uh, USB power delivery, in that case, I know that they are just 15 volts tolerant. No, I did not blow them up. I did not smoke them. But it is just written that do not do not go over 20, uh, do not go over 15, because they are expected. They can negotiate only 12, so they have a small margin on top of that. Okay, thank you. Hi. Um, what's a good reference platform or dev board that includes a, you know, the full PD capability and the peripheral side, but also something that you can then kind of explore the both, like the two sides of the communication? Uh, that depends on what uh, what kind of reference do you expect. Uh, so, uh, the best things that we found were STM kits, STM32, ST Micro. Thank you. If you hear this. Uh, your devices are really great, and uh, the uh, other reference, well, not so reference board that helped me a lot during debugging is really just a breakout of the USB-C, because then I can scope into and I can listen for the messages, I can look that the traffic is going. Uh, so this is the, these two are generic things. Uh, I think Brian uh, did the uh, USB-C power delivery uh, monitor based on STM32. So if you if you want, uh, uh, you can find Brown Donoghue on the IRC and talk to him. Uh, and the actual question of the reference comes from uh, what kind of device or what kind of a vendor are you working with? Because uh, fortunately or unfortunately, there is no such thing as the as the generic USB-C uh, or generic USB-C dev kit. So your vendor or your hardware platform will, uh, should provide you with enough details. So for the Qualcomm, I can just I can say that RB5 has a really good old school TCPM. 
uh, the uh, question, oh, that's RB5 robotics. The uh, RB1, RB2 boards uh, have this non-PD implementation, so if you want to try the non-PD with your devices, RB1, RB2. Uh, for, the, uh, UC, uh, for the UCSI stuff, uh, newer dev kits uh, starting from uh, SM83 or 8450, they have the UCSI implemented in the firmware and they provide these UCS, UCSI messages for the, uh, for, this, for the host site. So for the other platforms, I, I cannot really say, but I think on the, on the MX world, on the rock chip world, uh, there is also con uh, con uh, uh, the same uh, kind of implementations, uh, either TCPM or the, or, the UC, uh, or the TCPSI. I have not seen the UCSI implemented for the standard embedded interface, uh, embedded vendors or embedded Linux vendors, but maybe that will change in a, in a few years. Thank you. Uh, what about USB 4? How does it fit into this? Uh, sorry, USB, USB 4? USB, USB 4, yes. Uh, yeah, this is a new topic for Linux, so we do not have that implemented yet. Uh, basically, it will be, it is still USB C, so it is still uh, all these messages. Uh, it is required to be backwards compatible with just USB 3. It is required to be backwards compatible with the display port. Uh, I think it is required to be uh, also to be compatible with the uh, Thunderbolt. Yeah, Thunderbolt is yet another type uh, USB C alt mode. So when you plug your laptop into, th into the Thunderbolt dock, this is also USB, USB C, and this is all that messages. Uh, and I think USB 4 also provides PCI pass-through the, as a native thing. Uh, so that, that would require additional messages uh, to negotiate that mode, to negotiate the capabilities, and then to route SBU pins to the PCIe host. I think that's the main difference. But all this infrastructure stays, right? Yes, okay. everything stays. Uh, so the, the, well, this was created for USB 3.1. Uh, but it still stays up to USB 4, and I hope that we, nothing will significantly change for the next couple of years, couple of decades. So I, re I really like this thing from the software point of view. I hate it from the hardware point of view a little bit, but because it breaks too easily. I mean, physically breaks. But from the software point of view, it is what we have now and what we will have in the next 10 years. Thank you. Okay, I think that's it. Then thank you. And if you have any more questions, uh, you can catch me either at our booth or somewhere at the conference.